In this video, we're going to take a look at writing quadratic functions given zeros or x-intercepts. This video could also be entitled writing equations given quadratic equations given solutions or um, roots. So remember that terminology. We have to be clear on exactly what we've got going on and, and then we know what we need to do. So we're going to call out writing quadratic functions given zeros. So I'm given a whole bunch of sets of zeros here, and I want to write some quadratic functions that will have those particular zeros. Remember when we were finding the zeros, what we would do is one method is to break down and factor, and then we usually have two different equations that we need to solve. We're going to work the reverse of that. So something like this. For this first one, I'm just going to take each of those values and set it equal to x. So x equals negative 4, x equals 6. Then I want to make it so that it equals 0. So I'm going to get it over to the other side. So I'm just going to go plus 4, plus 4. And on this side I have x plus 4 equals 0. And over here I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 6. So then I have x minus 6 equals 0. Okay, then those two things are going to be multiplied by each other. So I'm going to have x plus 4 times x minus 6. Hopefully this seems familiar as we're working backwards. And this is equal to 0. Okay, then finally I'm going to foil these two together so that I have a quadratic equation. So my first terms are x times x, which would be x squared. Then my outer terms, x times negative 6. Well, that would be negative 6x. My inner terms are 4 times x. So that would be 4x. So I have minus 6x plus 4x. So I combine those, I have minus 2x. Then 4 times negative 6 would be minus 24. Now, to make that a function, I'm just going to set that equal to f of x. Okay, So this is a function that would have the zeros of negative 4 and 6. Well, we can also check that. So if I graph that function right there, where should it cross the x-axis? It should cross that negative 4 and 6. So here's the graph I created of that function. Let's see what it looks like. Huh. Sure enough, right here it's crossing at 6, and over here it's crossing at negative 4. So this function has those particular zeros which we're interested in. All right, so that's the first one. Now let's do that same thing and give it another try. So this one, going to set each of those equal to x. So x equals 1, and x equals negative 5. Then... I'm going to get it so that it has it's equal to 0. So I want to get this over with the x. So in this case, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I have x minus 1 equals 0. And then on this one, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I have x plus 5 is equal to 0. Then I'm going to take each of those. We're going to multiply. So x minus 1, that's my first piece. And then x plus 5 is going to be my second piece, x plus 5. Then I'm going to go ahead and FOIL. So first be x squared. Then we have minus x. And then the outers are 5x. So 5x minus x would be 4x, so plus 4x. Then negative 1 times 5 would be minus 5. So if we go ahead and graph that then we should have a function whose x-intercepts or whose zeros are at negative are at negative 5 and 1 so let's check it out here it is sure enough negative 5 and 1 there's my function alright let's take a look at this next one again a similar situation where we're going to first start by setting each equal to x. So x equals negative 2, 
and x equals negative 8. Then get each equal to 0, so plus 2, plus 2, x e plus 2 equals 0, and then this one I go plus 8, plus 8, x plus 8 equals 0. Then I'm going to write those like so, and we will FOIL to get our quadratic function. So x plus 8, first term is going to be x squared, then we have 2x and 8x, that would be 10x, and then 2 times 8 is 16. So, and that's our function, we'll call that f of x. If we graph that, let's take a look at what it looks like. In this case, there it is. So, crosses at negative 8 and negative 2. Alright, one more. This one, <coughs> we're going to go ahead and, again, do that same thing to start. So, x equals negative 3, and x equals 3. Then, I want to get them equal to 0, so I'm going to add 3, add 3. So, we have x plus 3 equals 0. And this one, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So, I have x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, then, I'm going to go ahead and take each of those, set them up. If you haven't noticed already, this is one of those special cases where when we FOIL it, our first term is going to be x squared, then we have positive 3x, then we have minus 3x, the x's all cancel out, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, so that's going to be our function. Remember that this is what's called a difference of squares. A difference of squares factors into that. Notice if we flip these over, it would be the opposite of what we have done when we're trying to find those zeros. So finally, to look at the graph of that last one, looks something like this. And we notice there it is crossing at 3 and at negative 3, just as we wanted. So in this video, we looked at writing quadratic functions given zeros. The first step is to take each of those, set them equal to x, then get them so that they're equal to zero so get that stuff over with the x then we take those two pieces put them together and we're gonna we're gonna multiply those two and we foil to do that and then we're left with our quadratic function and this is just one of a number of uh, really an infinite number of quadratic functions that would give us those solutions this is the most simple if we just multiplied through by another number that would give us a different quadratic function but it would have those same zeros. Hopefully this was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.